Okay, well, it's time for another fill-in video. Get us from last week to what's coming up. Got kind of a short one, and it's a theme that we've talked about over and over and over again, so I won't be spending a lot of time um, explaining, because if you've been with us in the Gospel of Luke, then you should already be right on uh, right on track with what Jesus is doing here. Um, it is going to be Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. Um, and you do have to forgive me where my desk is set up in the new family center. I'm right by the window. I like being by the window. There's a lot of activity happening outside. I like that. But it doesn't make for the best audio for videos. So if you hear cars going by, that's what it is. And I'm probably going to be shooting, you know, right here every week for these fill-ins. So just is what it is. And that's the last time I'm going to apologize for it, I suppose. So uh, let's get right into Luke chapter 19, verse 11. He um, is maybe still at Zacchaeus's house when what we're about to read happens. Maybe he's already left. Uh, nevertheless, the, the timing is between uh, his being in Jericho and heading toward Bethany, which um, we're going to read about Bethany and then the Mount of Olives, which we'll read about um, this coming weekend. So verse 11. Now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Now, this is important. We are going to stop here. Um, you're going to see that this weekend because on Sunday we're going to uh, read through the triumphal entry when Jesus actually enters into Jerusalem. And that's exactly what they think is happening. So we'll talk about that. But he needs to prepare them sort of one last time before they get things really ramped up. Um, and uh, he said this multiple times in what we've read through the Gospel of Luke. So like I said, this is not new. Um, this, should, this story should not come as any surprise to you, this parable, when we, when we read it. I'll just read all the way through it and then just take a moment at the end to, to recap. Verse 12. Therefore he said, a certain nobleman... I said it was the last time I was going to apologize for the cars, but... Just obnoxious. Anyway, therefore he said, a certain nobleman went into the far, a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and said to them, do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you because you were an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank, that at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him, and give it to him who has ten minas. But they said to him, Master, he has ten minas. For I say to you, that to everyone who has will be given, and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Now, what we have here from Jesus is a theme that we've seen throughout Luke, so no surprise. Um, but we definitely see a, a drastic set of circumstances that you can't take and apply directly to Jesus. He's, he's using an extreme example to make a lesser point. And so um, the idea of the, the master in this story being an austere man or, or a cruel man or a wicked man in some way, um, obviously that doesn't apply to Jesus. But Jesus is saying that if this is true of a, of a wicked leader, 
how much more so of a, a good leader like him. So the, the, the point of the story is pretty clear that Jesus is going to be going. And Luke makes it clear to us that the reason he tells this story is because the disciples think that Jesus is going to take the throne immediately. So Jesus knows that's not the case, and he wants to prepare them. He wants them to understand that those who reject him are going to be punished for that, but that those who take what he's given to them and invest it, so to speak, those who are faithful to produce for the kingdom will be rewarded in like kind. So um, the the one who was most faithful and and was able to earn 10 minas, they, they received more reward and more responsibility. The one who was lesser so, lesser so. And the one who wasted it and just put it into a handkerchief, they lost their minas. Now, they don't fall under the category of the ones who... Uh, wouldn't wouldn't uh, be his enemy um, and would be slayed before him. So this, I believe, would be someone who did trust Christ but just wasted what they had been given. And so they end up with very little in the kingdom. And so that's the story, and, and it's been told multiple times through the gospel. So, um, it, again, it's nothing new to us. Um, but he's getting them ready because he's about to enter into Jerusalem, and it's going to be quite a scene. And we'll talk about that on Sunday. So I'll see you then.